Hi, in this video we'll show you the School for AI for Brain Simulator. School for AI is both a training and testing environment that allows you to teach your brain architectures new skills. At the same time, you can collect statistics and measure performance of your architectures. School for AI is a world within Brain Simulator. It has a special GUI found in the view menu. Let's open it. Notice that opening the school window changed my current world to school world. Before I explain the school window, let's have a look at the interface of school world. There are two visual inputs called field of view and field of focus. Field of view visual input should provide a low resolution input that covers a large area and is centered on your agent's position in the virtual world. Field of Focus visual input provides a high resolution input that covers a relatively small area that can be positioned relatively to your agent's position. There is also a textual input and data input. The data input can contain virtually any data, but has to be a fixed size to assure the agent's interface is not changing. If your data is small, you can pad it with zeros and then use the data length input to indicate the size of the useful payload. Next. There is the obvious reward signal and some meta information about the current training sample available in the LT status input. Lastly, there is an output which your agent should fill, the actions. Your agent is expected to move around the environment, interact with it and move its field of focus to see details of the scene. Let's go back to the school window. The whole purpose of School for AI is to take a dump AI and by training and testing transform it into a super smart AI. To accumulate skills, we need some exercises that will teach those skills. We call these exercises learning tasks. Let's create a curriculum that will contain some learning tasks. I'm not choosing some simple learning tasks for an initial training. You can view details of each learning tasks uh, of each learning task in the window on the right. By the way, you can create learning tasks of your own. We try to create a code that is easy to extend, so creating a new learning task should be straightforward. There. Now I have a curriculum that will first teach the agent some basics in a simple 2D environment and then my agent will try to learn to play Pong. Notice that on the right I see the sequence of learning tasks that will be run based on the curriculum that I specified before. I can check the individual learning tasks to see a brief description or look at the difficulty levels my agent will need to pass before the learning task is over. Let's start a simulation. Oh. This message reminds me that I have not designed any architecture that would control my agent in school. I can cheat a little bit and pretend that the architecture is me. I will add a user input node that allows me to specify the actions output manually. I can also use the device input node, which is very convenient for controlling movement in continuous environments using your keyboard. I'll switch to the device input node here. Ok, let's start a simulation. A landing task is just a collection of atomic problems and we call those atomic problems training units. On the right, you see the visual data that your agent is receiving at the moment. Every image belongs to a new training unit. In this case, you see that the training unit is a randomly positioned red or white square and the task of the agent is to indicate the color of the square using its action output. So it's just a simple classification task. Normally, the world waits for your architecture to decide about the correct action. It doesn't wait for me as I am using the device input node, so I should just be quick enough. I'm not quick enough, so 
I will use an emulate success button to pretend that I'm a super smart AI that is able to solve all the training units successfully. Do you see what's happening? We are moving through the levels and on to the next landing task. There is no fixed guideline for what the landing task should look like or what it should teach. The researchers or developers can choose to implement new landing tasks in any way they want. I will not go through all the training with you. I'll stop the training and save the current results to a file for later analysis. Notice that the tasks you've seen so far were fairly discontinuous. It was always one frame for question, next frame for answer. We've prepared continuous landing tasks too, which teach your agent navigation skills, and we have prepared a continuous 2D world for more advanced continuous landing tasks. We call that world Toy World, and we intend to add some interesting landing tasks there in the future. You'll find Toy World in the current release of the Brain Simulator. I'll load a new curriculum that contains some navigation tasks and toy world. You can now see what a navigation task looks like. There's a small space engineer that needs to navigate to its ship. Let's skip to toy world. I'll modify the curriculum so it contains toy world only. You now see an agent in the center of the field of view. The agent can move around and interact with objects. You can also switch the view from top view to a first person 3D view. That feature is at its experimental stage, but we expect it, it, will, it will be very useful soon. There is also some simple collision physics. We try to make the world rich with features so that there are many options for learning. This about wraps up our short introduction to School for AI in Brain Simulator. If you want to know more, please visit the documentation page for Brain Simulator, linked under the video. The documentation page describes School for AI in more detail. We'll be happy if you download and try out School for yourself, or if you clone a copy of the source code and try to create some landing tasks of your own. Last but not least, in the latest release, we've introduced a Python API for Brain Simulator which means that if you want to use Brain Simulator School but want to code your architecture in Python, this is now possible. Thank you for watching.